Hi everybody, this is Dave Vellante. Welcome to Cube Conversations. We've been having a series of conversations with customers on the state of data protection, and we're really pleased to have Jamie Shepard here. He's a Senior Vice President at Luminate. Jamie, always a pleasure, good to see you. Same here, Dave. Now, oftentimes we talk about you as, a, as an industry integrator, reseller, technologist. Uh, we're going to talk about Luminate as a customer. Sure. You guys are a customer of, of EMC's data protection. So, uh, I want to start there. So, talk about the state of data protection at your shop prior to the bringing in data domain or Avamar or whatever it is you guys have, we'll talk about that, but what was keeping you up at night at that time? Yeah, I'll tell you Dave, the, the challenges we were having, um, you know, we're, we're a global company, you know, obviously nationally based out of, out of Dallas, I'm here out of the Boston office, and, and we were having a challenge with customer data, quite honestly, right? So not only our own data, we have the Massachusetts laws we had it with here too, so we had archive data, we had e-discovery we had to deal with, so it's funny because when I look back at what Luminate did, we really should kind of follow EMC's whole information lifecycle management. Remember when they, yeah, they sure. coined that? So ILM. ILM, <laughs> yeah. So we definitely got involved with that where we were the prototypical you know, exchange shop file system. Um, we had our backup target. We actually had an archive target with Centera's on that. Uh, we had a lot of NAS, a lot of file systems, uh, heavy exchange, SharePoint, and SQL. And you know, we had the same challenge as everybody else did. My biggest nightmares were twofold. My nightmares that kept me up at night were systems going down and not having you know, that backup that I needed. Uh, my businesses, if I lose an email, I, I, I've lost a deal. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. So we can't lose that stuff. Uh, the other thing is we hold a lot of customer data. Okay, so we have HIPAA, healthcare. I do a lot in healthcare. We have HIPAA requirements. Uh, we have a lot of the PHI requirements out there. You know, we're, we're, we're heavily regulated uh, by not only state and federal regulations, we do a lot in SLED. So, you know, we have to adhere to everything, you know, quite honestly. So if we don't have good policies in place, um, that's the killer. And that was the thing that we did. We, we, we live by our four, P, uh, four P's of NQ, our methodology, and it's process, policy, people, and product last. So You're eating your own dog food on that. Had yeah. to, had right. to, you know, and that was a key thing. So we, we kind of follow that whole thing, but it, it's evolved into uh, something pretty unique today. So what specifically did you, did you bring in? What did EMC do? Can you talk about the infrastructure and Yeah, what EMC it looks didn't like? have to do too much. Uh, as you guys know our model, we're very tight with EMC. We've been doing, you know, uh, we, we, we know all of their products A to Z, except D for Documentum, we're not there. But in any event, um, we basically were the guys that you know, we kind of went down the prototypical way, but we also pushed the envelope in virtualization. So I saw my data center grow, you know, where our old building was right. there. And we, same issue, to do two data centers. One was uh, innovation center to do demonstrations and, and, and other one was production. And we'd also replicate between the two, okay? So um, I was just growing out of space, power, everything. I was adding disk to it, I was adding resources to it, CPU. I needed to consolidate that. So my first approach was, Let's upgrade and consolidate. And from there, I wanted to streamline. Okay, so specifically, what did you guys bring in? We basically took, we had two Centeras for archiving. So we archived all of our emails using, uh, at the time, email extender and disk extender, which is now Source One. Right. We were in an older exchange shop. So we, we were the typical, it's time to do it all together. And we did it all. And we did it in a phase of about eight months. So what we did first was um, we brought in data domain. Okay, and we brought in two data domain boxes. We standardized on Networker as a uh, backup platform. We used uh, FLR within our VNXs for the file level retention, and we migrated off of our Centeras. Uh, that was a challenge for us, but not a technical challenge, more about how they store things and objects, and right. now we have to bring that back to the data world, so it was almost like a rehydrate of our archive, but I had to get the Centeras out of there. Uh, the beauty for me for data domain was, um, you know, we have limited resources like a lot of guys. As, as, as much as we do a lot, we're in the field a lot helping customers, so I can't really manage IT. I wanted it to manage itself, so if, if I had good processes, good policies, good people, and a good product, I don't have to spend a lot of time with that. So we standardize on data domain. We lift that up as uh, almost like a multi-tenant device, quite honestly. So we uh, had part of it as a worm device, so I was, you know, write once, read many type of device. That was my archive target. Um, once we moved everything over, we upgraded to Exchange, um, 2010, virtualized everything. Um, 
Networker 8.2 now. We actually just went to that, uh, that upgrade. Uh, we implemented Syncplicity for a secure file and sync. Okay. So I've got a lot of this stuff within my data center that's helping us you know, act very mobile, but keep everything secure. And you and you have a target uh, on site, and then you you vault off site as we well. We replicate to uh, Texas. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. And then talk a little bit about the the sort of before and after, maybe sort of the business results. Business results huge. I mean, at the end of the day, we probably saved about one hundred ninety five thousand uh, dollars on resources. You know, I did a whole ROI on how much time am we actually spending. You know pulling things here, moving things around, and uh, EMC's automation just makes it so easy. So this you know? is arms and legs, people time, right? 100%, yeah. I mean, product-wise, you save on maintenance, you save on heating costs, we went to a smaller data center, you know, it, it's all the typical stuff you read out there, which I have to say, I'm not a white paper fan, usually it's made to sell, but it, it's as advertised. You know, my deduplication rate on a lot of things are about 10 to 1, uh, sometimes 12 to 1 on certain types of uh, applications, so I'm, I'm really happy with the Do you use any tape? No, zero. No tape, whatever? Nope. No, nope, we have a replicated devices, so we actually have it bi-directional replication as well. Um, and as I said, I set, set it up as multi-tenant, so we have it, we have it segregated per uh, the user. So we have legal, we have HR, we have our healthcare division, uh, we have general population, we have different states, you know, Massachusetts. It's pretty, it's pretty good how we have it broken So this out. is essentially your, your archiving system, your email archiving system? I'm like my own little service provider right now. L like say, legal holds? Yep. Any issues you have there, it, 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 it's dealt with with this infrastructure. Yeah, we were able to, you know, we upgraded everything to Source One as well um, for both SharePoint and Exchange. And we were able to, we actually had a uh, situation where there was an employee, there was a breach, not that we caused, but we were part of the team at the customer. So we were requested to say, hey, do you have documents from their employee that was collaborating with us? And you know, it was just a piece of cake for our legal department to go in without IT's and intervention and pull all those documents out. Let's talk about um, some advice that you'd give the customers. If you had to do it over again, would you do anything differently uh, and or what would you advise people going through a similar project? That's a great question. Um, I would advise them to work with us on NQ because honestly, if you don't align those four P's up, you know, process, policy, people, and product, you're just throwing these solutions out there. So, we didn't do the best job of that, you know, early on. I think we were too eager to have the archive, too eager to get this done, too eager, and we didn't take the time to plan properly. Uh, the second time around, which was this time that we're in right now, we definitely planned it, and we did a great job of uh, not only achieving what we wanted to in those results, but we were in a much better state right now. So I'd tell customers, please try to take the time up front and plan it, you know, try to know. My whole thing, Dave, is corporate governance, okay? To me, data protection is a piece of corporate governance, you know? Yes, is it secure, is it compliant, but am I in a good corporate governance state? And right now we are. Is it a boardroom discussion at your company? 100%, yeah. Have you guys ever had to do a recovery? Yeah, I mean, we, I, I, I didn't sell this internally as easy as I'm communicating. <laughs> okay, so, so talk about know, that. What's with the big Illuminate, well, with the big Illuminate, say. I had to go to finance, I had to go to legal, and um, you know, they thought I was coming to push my thoughts and ideas on what we should do, and quite honestly, uh, I, did a, I think I did a pretty good job of, you know, we're, we're, we are now uh, governed, we're a Texas-based organization, Dallas, with entities in Massachusetts, uh, Ohio, uh, Kansas City, Nashville, uh, Southern Texas, Oklahoma, so uh, in Ohio Valley, we're all over the place, right? So what I was able to show them is um, basically legal documentation that a company based out of Texas, they have to adhere to all these different state laws and regulations, and Massachusetts is pretty clear. You know, so I was able to sell them on the idea that we have to protect the business entity first. You don't want to be sued. Okay, so that's how we were able to roll this out in production. So it was all based on uh, legal um, and, and compliance, you know, and that's the key thing. So that's kind of the original justification. Backup is, you know, expensive insurance, let's yep. face it. But, um, but, but there's a lot of talk in the industry about getting, getting more value out of it. Obviously, the, the, you know, the, the, the perpetual backup window, I always have this problem of trying to meet my backup window. Data growth is, is causing challenges for me. So what do you see as the future of of data protection. Will we go beyond insurance? Will, be the, will there be added business value? Will be, there be new ways of protecting data with all this you know, explosion going on that can help us with this oh, backup window? Absolutely. Where do you see I it mean, going? I, I, I see it there today, but we're not there. The, the industry is there, we're talking about it. It's analytics. It's all analytics. It's big data analytics. I mean, if you go back, you, you and I are aged a little bit, but that's a good thing now in IT. 
and because we have relevance and we can have a, a story and what goes around comes around. But I'm seeing, you know, where data warehouses were once built to build in all of this technology, but it, this where data went to die. Everyone would say data warehouses, data went to die. You could pop on Cognos on Oracle and you know, it was the user, if they didn't know how to ask the question and go search the data, you weren't getting anything, mm -hmm. okay? I look at backups now, that's live data. That's real data. That's, it's backed up, I get it deduplicated and compressed and sent off from a compliance security data protection, but that's intelligent data. I'm not using that data effectively. People are throwing that away. So they, their investment in data protection, to me, they're seeing a third of it, okay? Um, they should be looking at not just, is it a corporate government thing, and am I data protected and backed up? Can I recover? But can I mine that data? What can I do with that data? Is that data intelligent? Yeah, it's real stuff. I back it up every day. So actually getting value out of that 100%. data that used to just sit there and be sort of dead weight. And it still does that today, by mm -hmm. the way. We have customers that are building in these big Hadoop infrastructures mm -hmm. just to do exactly what I said and they're not touching backups. Well, no, the backups are the backups. No, that's not true. You know, this is like going back to the AS400 days where that box just stayed in the corner and nobody touched that, you know? So it's like, no, there's a lot you can do with that. All right, good. About getting value out of your existing infrastructure and thinking ahead. So, Jamie, Absolutely. thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you again. No problem. Thank you, Dave. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante. This is CUBE Conversations. We'll see you next time.